Space is the most honest conversation I know how to have. You have only your next breath. You have only so much water. You have only your crewmates to keep you alive. And that's true here on Earth. Everyone is important, but we forget. There's always more people. There's always more food. There's always more air, but there isn't. And in space, you realize that. My name is Shayna Gifford. I was the chief medical and safety officer on the one-year mission to simulated Mars. The idea actually was sort of invented by some folks in Hawaii who looked at their beautiful big volcanoes and thought, that kind of looks like Mars. There's nothing up there. There's no people, there's no trees. The only things you can see are other volcanoes. So you're actually very isolated up there. So they built a base. 1,200 square feet of a geodesic dome, and they started doing research about what it would take to put people on actual Mars, about how to keep them healthy and how to keep them getting along for a year. Did it seem like time moved slower or faster? It seemed normal at first. One second seemed like a second, one day seemed like a day. And then it started to expand and contract in strange ways. All of a sudden, weeks seemed like a day and then a month seemed like a week. We didn't believe we'd been gone for a year. It didn't feel that way. If no cars passed, if the lights never blinked on and off in buildings, how would you know that time was passing? For us, the sun would rise, the sun would set, but there were no seasons. So time seemed to both shrink and expand, strangely. Do you miss it? Sometimes I do, yes. You want to go back? I think someday, yes. Your grandmother passed away while you were inside the dome. What was that like? She was healthy when I last saw her here in Los Angeles. She was standing by her kitchen, washing green grapes in the white porcelain sink. And then she just began to decline. And my mother tried to shield me from it, but my cousins would tell me what was going on. So I started sending her films I made of myself. Hi, Grandma. Everything's doing as well as can be. I hope. Say hi to Grandpa, and I love you. And one day I knew this would be the last film I made for her. So I had to think of something to say. And so I said the thing I would say if I'd been there. Thank you. I love you. I'll see you soon, I hope. Hmm. She must have been very proud of you. I hope so. What was her name? Beverly. How much life can pass by us when we stay in one place? What's the journey to Mars like? Well, that's a good question. I hope it'll be scientifically and intellectually rigorous and very gratifying for the people who finally do it. I hope it'll also be challenging and maybe just a little bit scary. You're far away from everything when you're out there. You can't just run to the store. You don't have a tool, you don't have it. You have to make it or print it or hit rocks with hammers until something comes out of it. No one alive today remembers what it was like to try and go to California back when people lived in mostly Boston. But that's what it's like. You turn around and everything you know and everyone you know and everything you know how to use is thousands of miles away, millions of miles away. And it's a beautiful challenge and it's terrifying. Maybe we should figure out how to take care of our planet before we start screwing up every other one out there. <laughs> I, I don't know, I kind of think wherever you go, there you are. And just because we happen to be in a spacesuit doesn't mean we turn into Gandhi. You're absolutely right. The spacesuit doesn't make you a better human. But the question that nobody asks is what happens if we don't become an interplanetary species? What does the story of humanity look like then? What do you think it looks like? Most people think that we have to become an interplanetary species in case a uh, meteoroid destroys the Earth. 
or in case there's a giant war or an epidemic. And that's true. That would certainly be nice to have a carbon copy of people, but you would need tens of thousands of humans or very good technology to actually have Mars be a backup. And Mars will never be a backup of Earth. It's not Earth, and it never will be. But if we can make it there, we can make it here. Because we can't get there as single countries believing only what we want to believe, and people who only get along with each other on certain terms when we feel like it. We are going to have to get beyond ourselves to make that work. And once we do that, I don't see any reason why we have to stop at Mars. We can go anywhere. And if we can't get beyond ourselves, I don't think we're ever going to go anywhere. The fact that it brings us together as a species peacefully, it's the one thing I know of that actually unites us. That in itself is a perfectly good argument. Would you like to know my favorite argument? Yes. That Mars, space in general, is the ultimate extreme environment. And we need to become masters of an extreme environment because that's what we're doing to this planet now. We need to become masters of it and learn how to live with it, learn how hard it is, and hopefully we'll choose not to do that here on Earth.